Hi Christina. Question number one. Were you raised atheist or did you have a religious upbringing of some sort? Um, I was kind of raised religious. Um, the school I went to um, was sort of semi-religious, but in the UK that probably would seem quite secular to uh, the typical American person. Um, my parents made myself and my brothers and sisters uh, say prayers when we were very young, when we went to bed, the Lord's Prayer, um, although I had virtually no understanding of what that actually meant. Um, question 1a. If raised religious, when and why did you become an atheist? There are several parts to this, so um, I'll deal with that first. When and why did I become an atheist? Um, it was more of a realisation than anything else, and it's not something I really thought about when I was very young. Um, but I never actually believed um, in these stories. I, I never thought that they were actually true. I thought they were stories. Um, the only thing which I assumed was true was that God was real. Um, I just assumed that because that's what grown-ups were telling me. Or some, anyway. Some didn't even mention it. The next part of question 1a. Uh, what was this transition from religion like for you? for your family, etc. Um, not really like very much at all. Um, it's, as I said before, in the UK um, we don't have really strong religious people. We, there are some, but not. I, I wasn't involved in anything uh, overtly religious. It's just something people don't talk about that much. It doesn't really have a huge influence on our lives. Was this a quick transition or a slow one? Was it easy for you or difficult? This is still question 1A. Um, it's, for me it was a gradual realisation. Um, and it wasn't until I was past 30 uh, until I was pretty damn sure that uh, God was man-made, not the other way round. Um, not at all difficult, really. Um, no major traumas there. Question 1b. If raised atheist, have you ever been drawn to religion at any point in your life? Why or why not? Well, I wasn't really raised atheist. I was I guess you could say I was raised secular, even though there was some religious influence. Um, drawn to religion. Um, I've always been drawn to religion, but that is in terms of... Uh, I'm fascinated by it. I want to understand why so many people believe this stuff and think that these stories in these very old books are actually real. That's a fascinating thing for me. Um, but in terms of... Yeah, in terms of believing it, then no. Um, I've always been sceptical. Uh, when I was younger, I thought that the people who were religious um, were... You know, they believed it because they had reason to believe it, as in, they had spoken to God. Their prayers had been answered in a... in such a way that, uh, you know, wasn't just down to random chance. Since then, obviously, I found out and understood a lot better what faith is. Blind faith. Um, and that, to me, seems very good reason to conclude that the whole thing is, you know, a man-made thing, enterprise, whatever you like. Question number two. Overall, would you say that other people's belief in God is a good thing, a bad thing, or something you're indifferent about? Why? Overall, I'm fairly indifferent to it, but um, 
obviously this question applies very differently to different people. The people who use their religious beliefs to uh, do evil things in this world, such as um, blowing other people up um, because they think that that is the right thing to do, they think that they will be rewarded in an afterlife which they believe is real. Um, obviously that, in that situation it's very, very bad. Um, the kind of religious people I encounter um, don't really talk about it very much um, and they lead their lives in a pretty secular way. They don't try to convert people to their way of thinking. Um, it's only really on YouTube and on the internet that I get involved in religious discussions in any kind of great detail. Question number three. Have you ever been treated differently by people because you're an atheist? If so, please describe this in detail. Well, on, on YouTube all the time. Um, I've had long in-depth discussions with uh, people in comment sections and uh, one of the things which some of my religious opponents have encouraged me to do and something I've taken on is uh, they've encouraged me to read the Bible. Most of them say read the New Testament first and then the Old Testament um, which is exactly what I have been doing. Uh, I did start with the New Testament and got as far as the book of Romans um, but there was so much reference back to th stuff that happened in the Old Testament that I decided to pause that and go to the beginning of Genesis. I have read bits and pieces of the Bible before but uh, never made any really serious attempt to read the whole thing. So over the last couple of months I've read the first six books of the New Testament and up to uh, the end of Ezra in the Old Testament. And I have to say that um, it hasn't convinced me <laughs> one little bit. Um, it has helped to put some things in context, but uh, overall um, I'm as much of an unbeliever as I was before I started reading the Bible in depth. The stories are just... so, so much of it doesn't make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense on a literal level. Um, you know, the whole business of uh, scapegoating, uh, not being directly responsible for your actions, um, the whole thing about being forced to love and fear God, uh, you know, whether you love something or someone or not is not something you can choose to do. It's like believing. You can't choose to believe. You either do or you don't. If you're presented with something which makes sense, you tend to believe it. If it doesn't make sense, you don't. It's as simple as that. Um, now, when the religious people say that they're, they get their sense of morality from the Bible, you know, having read the Gospels, the four Gospels, um, and a good chunk of the Old Testament, I really don't understand how they can claim to have got their morals from the Bible. There's so much evil in there. Uh, there's so much evil commanded by God himself, the God character. Um, you know, just one thing that springs to mind, the uh, Joshua and the destroying of um, Jericho. God commanded him to utterly destroy the place and that doesn't just mean smashing the place to bits but that means killing every man, woman, child and animal. Um, you know, genocide in other words and the reason given was that the people there were evil. Uh, I have to ask how can young children be evil? How, how can that be, you know, when they're too young to have had their minds corrupted by evil people, too young to have made up their minds, what uh, kind of being would want to massacre them like that? It's, it's horrendous. And I mean, the, the story of Jericho is just one of many 
um, you know, God raining down ten different plagues on Egypt and hardening Pharaoh's heart at the same time. Why do that? It doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, I, I'm baffled by a lot of the stories in the Bible. If they're not supposed to be interpreted literally, how are they supposed to be interpreted? And here we come across another problem. Um, different religious people interpret the Bible in very different ways. For somebody approaching it as a relative newcomer, uh, how do we make sense of this very old book? You know, it's interesting historically, but to base your life choices on it, um, to, if you're a Christian, uh, to literally believe that if you believe in Jesus Christ, then your sins, your misdeeds will be forgiven, and you will end up in heaven. If you don't, you will end up burning in hell forever. It's just mad. Madness. Crazy. Anyway. I went off on a little bit of a rant. Question number four. If not a religious person, do you consider yourself to be a spiritual person? Why or why not? A spiritual person? Not really. But then this comes back to the question of what is spiritual? Um, if spiritual means are you a thoughtful person? Um, then yes, I do think about stuff quite a bit. Um, but if spiritual means you think that after you die your existence will continue in some way, your individuality, your consciousness, then no, I don't think so. I don't know that, but I don't think so. For what it's worth, I, um, I think that the fact that we have figured out so much about this universe um, is pretty awesome and amazing. We know that the atoms in our bodies come from second generation supernovas. Effectively, we are part of the universe, um, which is, you know, we are the consciousness of the universe. We might not be the only ones, but it's going to be hard for us to find out because intelligent life on other stars is so far away, um, so out of reach with our current technology that uh, we'll probably never find out. We're beginning to find out that there are planets orbiting other stars, um, and in the next few years with uh, new space telescopes we may find out quite a bit more about that. But in terms of being able to communicate with other uh, intelligent beings, apart from the massive time delay, you know, four years of a time delay in each direction to the nearest star, never mind other stars, uh, where was I? I keep going off on tangents. Um, we... Yes, I, I do think that when we die, um, our individuality will almost certainly, our individual consciousness will, will almost certainly stop. However, because we're part of the universe, and because parts of the universe are conscious, um, parts of the universe will go on being conscious, so in a kind of a way, it's a little bit like reincarnation, um, but without the uh, sort of mystical top coating that people like to put onto that um, by thinking that there's some possible way of remembering a previous life. We don't remember our previous lives. People who say they do are almost certainly imagining thoughts to that effect. Anyway, I'm running low on memory, so question number five. For many people, belief in God provides hope or comfort with respect to suffering in the, in the world and to the inevitability of death. As an atheist, how do you come to terms with these things? Um, I've kind of covered a little bit of that already. Uh, belief in God provides hope or comfort with respect to suffering in the world. Um, not the God that I have been reading about in the Bible. I mean, I've, I've, I've known a lot of this stuff before, but reading it so it's fresh in my memory, uh, God seems to be a bit of a bad bastard, really. I'm really struggling to see how people can describe him with a capital H as uh, 
you know, good or benign in any way. Um, vengeful, spiteful, yes, but uh, forgiving and tolerant. Um, the whole thing of equality. No, he's 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 not like that. He's a a dodgy character. Um, the inevitability of death. Well, people who believe that uh, they will be rewarded in heaven or punished in hell, I, I just don't see any good reason to believe that stuff. It's, uh, as far as I can make out, it's, it's a delusion. A complicated delusion, but a delusion nonetheless. As an atheist, how do you come to terms with these things? Just deal with it. It's not... Uh, it doesn't make me lose sleep at night, you know, I'd rather deal with the world as it is. As Christina says, she has a close personal relationship with reality. Anyway, see you in the next video.